Hey guys, what's up? Another crazy day in the world. Um, as you probably know, the UFO thing just happened. Uh, Congress is actually talking about it. Uh, House of Representatives holds a hearing on UFOs. CBS New Government Transparency. So they're slowly, uh, you know, introducing the idea that UFOs are real and are they multi-dimensional? Look, her name was Mrs. Luna, as you can see. And Luna means the moon. So, uh, like, you know, um, Selena Gomez is also the moon, Selena. It's the moon worship. It's the Ashtar, you know, pagan Babylonian priestess worship. And then you have this guy making this testimony, Mr. Graves, like death. Death is coming. You know, I behold a pale horse and death rode upon him. Okay? And this is all just pre-planning for the end times. Miss Fox with two X's here. Um, the Fox and her, even her earrings have an X or a cross on them. Okay? Um, you know, it's kind of like the wolf in sheep's clothing. So, Mr. Biggs... All their names mean something, okay? And all of their personalities are just a reflection of some end times Illuminati symbolism, okay? And it's it's clear as day. Now, what we need to understand is what this guy says. He's pretty awesome, Chris LaSala. I agree with a lot of his stuff, not everything, um, but a lot of it. He knows Christmas is pagan, so I automatically give him 10 points for that, whereas most Christians are still stuck with tradition. This guy's talking about how the aliens aren't really just from another planet or star system. They're, they're the actual fallen angels that have been here and that have been running the government. Remember what I said about the secret invasion and how um, uh, Nick Fury in the Spider-Man post credit sequence, he turns into a reptilian? I showed you that in my last video. Well... The whole Secret Invasion show, which got completely terrible reviews, by the way, was, was an extension of that and was explaining why Nick Fury turned into a reptilian um, during that. And so it, it all kind of ties together. And this guy's saying it's not aliens who are coming to help us because they're more enlightened. It's the Nephilim coming back. And guess what? He makes a great point here. Um... As the KJV states in Luke 17, 26, As it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be in the days of the Son of Man. That's what Jesus says. Well, what happened in the days of Noah? Not just a flood, but Genesis 6 says there were giants in the earth in those days, the Nephilim. And after that, when the sons of man came into the daughters of men, they bare children. Okay, so there's going to be another splicing of DNA. The iron mixed with the miry clay. Iron is metallic, robot, alien, AI, whatever, mixed with clay, our flesh. This is going to happen again. Just as in the days of Noah, when there were giants and aliens, basically, and so will it be during the end of days. So the aliens are coming back, but they're actually just fallen angels coming back. Here, see, you <laughs> You can go here too. Satanic government actors are psychologically conditioning us to like aliens or to be on the side of aliens, you know. And it's all a sham, and I agree with this guy. It's a false flag. Um, but let's get into some other stuff really quick. Some really controversial stuff. And by controversial, I mean the Bible says it, but you don't want to believe it. Jesus, ch or church, the church says Jesus saves. You know, only Jesus, no one else. Jesus says <coughs> to, <coughs> excuse me, to sit on my right hand and on my left hand is not mine to give. Did you just hear that? Jesus says he doesn't have the power to save you. It's scary. He's the one who brings truth. Jesus is the one who brings knowledge and love and compassion and the perfect example of how to live your life. But his sacrifice is what allows the Father to save us. He's not, he's not the one who saves. He's the one who was sacrificed in order for the Father to save us. Okay? The church says to pray to Jesus only. When Jesus says, you know, pray to the Father, our Father who art in heaven. The Lord's Prayer never mentions Jesus once. And Jesus' Father, you know, God, God, 
He says, I am the Lord, and besides me there is no Savior. Isaiah 43 and 11. The church says Jesus' his father is scary, so just worship Jesus. This is, this is a huge misconception, and this is why I talk about how Yahweh is Satan, okay? And how Yahweh is not the same as the true father of, God, of, of Jesus. The true father of Jesus says, I am he that blots out your transgressions for mine own sake, and will not remember your sins. Also Isaiah 43, okay? So the father is the one who doesn't remember our sins, because he was the one who was in charge of sending Jesus to be that perfect sacrifice so we could all be free from it. You know, the predestinated elect. Not everyone, only the predestinated elect whom the Father chose before the foundation of the earth, okay? <clears throat> and in Judaism, they say only we worship the true God and Jesus was just a false prophet and his death didn't mean anything. But what did Jesus say to the Jews, y'all? In John eight forty, he says, you're of your father, the devil. Yahweh was Satan. That's what he's basically saying. Did Jesus just confirm that Yahweh was Satan? Yes. You, the Jews, you are of your father the devil. He was a murderer from the beginning and abode not in truth because there is no truth in him. He's the father, he is a liar and the father of it. Satan is the father of lies. So what does he do? He pretends he's God because he comes as an angel of light. You know, deceiving people, convincing people he's God just because he has a bunch of technology and stuff. The reptilians are, you know, extremely ahead of everyone. Um, and it literally says he's a murderer. And what is Numbers 20, what is Numbers 31? He, God, quote unquote, Yahweh, kills kids. He says to bash the kids onto a rock. How is that Jesus is dead? Okay, it's just it just doesn't make any sense unless you accept these conspiracies as true. Okay, and here's my complete Mozart. That was totally worth it. Um, anyway, before we get into that, um, let's see some more stuff. Okay, yeah, we'll get into this. Look, this is a Mickey Mouse cartoon because we know Disney was a Freemason because he had the Secret Club Thirty Three in Disney World Thirty Three, of course. But look at this, you see the envelope right here? Just like the Masonic apron looks like an envelope, the Gmail logo. Mickey um, says, I, get, I guess this ought to get some action. Okay, big surprise at the old barn, Tuesday night, eight o'clock. Mickey, be sure and be there. All, all Masonic lodges hold their meetings at night. So that's one thing. Well, fellas, now that we've talked it over, all those in favor of us starting a barnyard chapter of Demole Holler A, and then they all do. A chapter, that's exactly how me Freemasons talk about their lodges, okay? Both brothers Disney and Spencer are legionnaires of the mother chapter, preceptory of the Legion of Honor. Okay, this is crazy stuff. And here, right here. Well, Horace, I guess it's all set for tonight. Yep, Mickey, all the stuff is in place. And it's the moon. This isn't, this is a weird comic. What does this have to do with kids being entertained, y'all? Okay, then Mickey says, I now pronounce the barnyard chapter order of the mole duly open and on the etc. etc. And you see this symbol right here? Common symbol of Freemasons. Oh, and Nazis. In the meantime, Pluto comes in and tries to kill a cat. Why is Mickey's dog named after the Lord of the Underworld? Pluto. Like, we, we're just kids and we're dumb. Even as grown-ups, we're dumb and think like kids. We need to zoom out and say, why is he named Pluto? Why is he saying the order of the chapter of Demolay with this weird symbol on his thing? This is one of the earliest Mickey Mouse car uh, comics ever. Anyway, so Hollywood's all mad now because AI can take its likeness. Um, <laughs> the AI, you know, computers will just scan your face and then use you in movies, you know, without, without you having to be there, okay? And that's now they're all scared, even though it's all planned. All right, the devil's substitute for joy is entertainment. Totally agree with that. 1 John 2.15 is, you know, love not the world, neither the things that are in the world, because it's not of the Father. It's of the devil. The devil is the prince of the power of this world. Okay? Um, and yeah, here's my whole spiel about Jesus and God and stuff. But anyway, yeah, the stuff is starting to culminate. 
and I found out about this guy, Arius, who was also um, a proponent, proponent of the concept that Jesus <clears throat> was not God because if Jesus was born during a specific time and place and God is eternal, how could he literally be God? Did Jesus create the Big Bang or was he, Jesus a messenger of truth? He performed miracles just like we can and Paul did. Um, and Jesus, you know, is the bringer of truth and life and love. And he's the perfect example of life. And what did Jesus say to do? A lot of people are like, what would Jesus do? And then they pray to Jesus. Well, what did Jesus say to pray to? Our Father who art in heaven. He didn't say, I'm Jesus, pray to me. He said, no, I'm Jesus. If you know me, and only through me can you know the Father, because everyone else has been living a lie. Jesus said to the Jews, your, fa your father is the devil. Yahweh is Satan. That is what that means. And that's why Hosea 13 says Yahweh is like a lion, a leopard, and a bear. Revelation 13 says the beast, Satan, is like a lion, a leopard, and a bear. How are those two things not contradictory unless Yahweh is Satan? And now during this UFO hearing, um, it says in San Diego, where the San Enough Repair Plants are, they, they, they saw a tic-tac-shaped looking UFO <clears throat> in, in this here. And they say tic-tac for a reason, because tac is another name for Satan. You can look at that movie um, by Stephen King uh, with Ron Perlman called Desperation. Um, and yeah, he, the, the demonic Ron Perlman just says tac a lot of the times, just randomly shouting it out. Okay, and that's because he's run by the devil. They're all, they're all legion. Okay, I am legion, and we are many. Um, I also heard a song by Rick Ross talking about he's a Freemason. So no wonder he's a really crappy rapper, but he's still famous for some reason because he paid his dues, and that's what you get. If you pay your dues, you get famous, despite your talent. Serious. Oh, and I watched Bo Was Afraid the other day. Um, <clears throat> super stressful. Super intense. Um, I'll talk about that another time. Okay. Um, let's take a look here. Um, let's see. Yeah, and in that movie, The Stand, Stephen King's The Stand, um, you know, about the end of times and the devil comes down after a virus was sent, you know, that whole thing. Well, the main character... Is, his nickname is East Texas, and that's kind of where I'm at. So I thought that was kind of funny. And yeah, secret invasion, once again, the reptilians coming down. It's a secret invasion. They're already here. And if we look at um, Thief and the Cobbler real quick, it talks about the One-Eye. <clears throat> the One-Eye is literally the bad guys of this whole um, animation, you'll see. And they had this whole crazy, brilliantly a animated um, war scene at the end where they try and invade the town. Um, let's see, I'm trying to go to where you can see. Yeah. <clears throat> and there's Tack. Once again, his name is Tack. This is the bad guy, and his name is uh, Tack or something. And here's the one eye. His right eye is darkened, it's always closed, and he has the one eye. That's representing the beast system coming. And the thief, uh, the, the thief and the cobbler represents, you know, Jesus saving us from that. <clears throat> the cobbler is like the false prophet who does it accidentally. But the thief is literally the nice guy, Jesus, who never says anything. He has no lines until the last five seconds of the movie. Um, but yeah, the bad guys are the one eye, as we've shown again and again and again. Now... <clears throat> Sorry, there's just so much to say all at once. As a Christian, you know, I don't eat crackers and grape juice. I don't dunk my head into water. I don't deck my trees with silver and gold during Tamu's birthday. Tamara. <laughs> Tamu's. This is what happens when you do voice to text, y'all. It has no clue what you're saying. Ezekiel. 814 talks about the women weeping for Tammuz, whose birthday is December 25th. Why would Jesus have the same birthday as these pagan evil things? I don't search for Easter eggs, I don't pray to Mary, and I don't read the Bible in English. These are all 
these are all deceptions, y'all. This is Satan taking over the world and, and disguising himself as an angel of light, a.k.a. the church. Okay? Um, let's see. Did all that stuff before. But yeah, I'm just, just kind of going off on this one because there's so much to say all the time, every time. Um, and I don't want anyone to get truth confused with conspiracies. These aren't conspiracies. I'm stating the Bible and I'm providing it in context. A conspiracy theory is just when you think something is evil because it's interesting or it kills time. No, this is beyond conspiracy theory. This is the end times deception because a lot of people don't know Revelation 17, 17, what does it say? God hath put in their hearts to fulfill his will and agree and to give their kingdom unto the beast until the words of God shall be fulfilled. God gives the kingdom unto the beast. That's why Republicans aren't true Christians. That's why Democrats aren't really truly about freedom and equal rights. And that's why we, we live in a um, horrendous Satan-filled existence. And no one can save us but Jesus is truth. Okay? It's, 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 it is and it isn't that complicated. Okay, it really is part of them making it complicated, but it's still just a basic truth. And I'll end on this. <clears throat> if Jesus literally said to the Jews that you are of your father the devil and he never knew you, what does that say about Judaism? Have, have you seen the tefillin before? Uh, tefillin. This is what the Jews have. Exodus 13 18 says you'll put he'll put a mark on your head and in your hand This is the tefillim. It's the black cube Saturn worship. Okay, and I used to do this as at my uh, bar mitzvah Okay, this is what I did before my bar mitzvah the black cube just like the cube of Islam is um, Representative of Saturn Satan he causes all to receive a mark in their right hands and in their foreheads This is the tefillim this is a pre the tefillim is a preview of this because when we go to Exodus 13 16 it says the same thing it shall be a token upon thine hand and for the frontlets between thine eyes 1318 in Revelation is the same as 1318 in um, Exodus isn't that crazy? And the tefillin is just a mini preview of that, okay? And it just happens to be the black cubes, okay? So Judaism is totally deceived. The Star of David is actually not Jewish at all. It is a completely pagan satanic symbol, as above, so below. That's what the Star of David is, okay?